Hello everyone, I'm Chris and I welcome you to Mura, the YouTube channel about waste. Today's subject will be the definition and significance of the term Mura, the name of this channel, and its relevance to you. Mura is the Japanese term for wastefulness, and by waste it doesn't necessarily mean trash or garbage, but it's any activity that does not add value to the consumer. The heart of the Toyota production system, or TPS, is to eliminate waste, Mura, in every single step of their production process. The result of eliminating waste is cost reduction, cost avoidance, and an increase in potential or increase in capacity. Now even though Toyota, the Japanese automotive company, classified these seven forms of waste, it does not mean that if you work outside of the manufacturing industry that this does not apply to you. On the contrary, if you work in the service industry, you can apply this knowledge, you can apply these tools in order to identify and eliminate wastes. I will use the restaurant business in order to illustrate the seven forms of waste. And this will also help you understand how you can apply lean principles outside of the manufacturing industry. So the first one we'll discuss is excess transportation. You open your new restaurant and you decide to go to the market every single day of the week in order to buy your ingredients to meet the demand of such given day. That means that during the week or throughout the week, you have to make seven trips. If instead you plan ahead and buy enough inventory for the next three to four days, then you can reduce your amount of trips to two per week. This will result in less money spent on gasoline, a reduced amount of time that you spend on the vehicle and on the market, and you will also lower the amount of mileage that you put in your personal or company vehicle, so less depreciation. Now, even though you have to go to the market, it's a necessity for you to get your produce by proper planning you can do cost avoidance and you can also begin to do some inventory control, which takes me to the next form of waste. So compared to the previous example, let's say that you decide to overstock in beverages to meet the demand of the following months. This results in higher cost of storage because you have a higher volume to keep at a certain temperature, which consumes more energy. Now, not only are you spending more money to store your inventory, but it also means that you're locking up capital or cash, which will take a longer time to transform to revenue. Now, if you do proper planning, you can reduce the amount of inventory on hand, and you can also set the frequency of when you purchase your inventory. This allows you to have more capital in hand and reduces your storage cost. Now, another issue that comes with excess inventory is that you have an increased potential of having damage on your produce and also a lack of control in the quality of it. Now, in order to reduce this waste, you can do a proper forecasting plan or a demand analysis. The third form of waste is motion. When you were designing the layout of your restaurant, not only did you put your bar far from the cooler, but you also limited the amount of space at the bar to keep sufficient stock to meet the shiftly demand. This means that throughout the shift, your employees will have to go to a cooler multiple times in order to meet your customer's demand. This results in waste of time. Now, by providing adequate setup to your employees, not only are you reducing waste in the form of motion, but you're also increasing the value that your employees can give to your customer. Now, looking into the next one, the time a worker is waiting to perform an activity is considered a waste. So a basic example, you want to cook or you want to bake something in your kitchen. However, you have to wait for it to preheat in order for you to begin your process. So this time spent waiting for your oven to reach a certain temperature is considered a waste. Now, if you invest in quality and efficient equipment, plus a good planning and schedule, then you can reduce the amount of time that your employees are waiting and not adding value to the customer. Now coming into the fifth one, overprocessing, Say, for example, that you want to add more staff into your kitchen or that you want to change the menu for the season. However, because of lack of preparation or lack of training, this new dish, when it comes to the customer, the customer realizes that it's undercooked. Now, this means that it has to escalate to the chef. The chef has to put resources, time to fix and continue to cook the dish. And then it goes back to the customer. So this entire process could have been eliminated if you would have provided in the beginning proper training or a proper way to detect that it was undercooked. Now, contrary to the previous example, let's say you didn't have an undercooked but an overcooked dish. That means that it's becoming very difficult for you to salvage it and most likely become scrap. 
Another fact is that as a restaurant, you buy your fresh produce by weight. Now, meaning that even if you're paying for the entire unit, you might not use it all because you have some yield. If you also focus on the presentation of your dish, then some ingredients might be deemed as defects. So by having proper training, a tighter control of material coming in and also tighter control of the process, you can reduce the amount of scrap and the defects that result from your operation. Now the last one is overproduction. And I deem this one the most critical because it yields to an excess of the other six forms of waste. Now, for example, you have a banquet in your restaurant for the evening. And because of lack of communication between sales and the chef, there's an overestimation of demand for the night based on wrong assumptions. Now, at the end of the evening, you realize that you have too many leftovers that, are, that have already been processed and have to result in scrap. If you have proper planning and the right communication between your employees, you could have avoided overproducing. Another form of waste was later introduced when the Toyota production system was adopted in the Western world. Now this eighth form comes in the waste of human potential, the unuse of talent or skills. And it typically happens when you completely disengage your management from your employees. And through this lack of engagement, you miss out on opportunities to improve your processes, to identify ideas to innovate, and it also becomes difficult to realize where training is needed. When you're trying to minimize waste, by not engaging the frontline workers' knowledge and expertise, it is difficult to improve processes. This is due to the fact that the people doing the work are the ones who are most capable of identifying problems and developing solutions for them. There are cases when the employee wants to grow or develop their skills in another area of the company, but because of lack of engagement, the full potential of such employee is limited. Therefore, having internal and external feedback and communication between management and employees, it's crucial in order to minimize this type of waste. This waste can also be seen when employees are not provided the proper training or the proper tools to do their job. The first step to minimize waste is to recognize that you have them and then implement an effective process in order to reduce them. Value stream mapping or VSM is a lean management method for analyzing the current state and designing a future one. It shows the flow of information and material as they occur. This is an effective tool for mapping out the processes involved, displaying the relationship between production processes in a visual manner, and for separating value-added and non-value-added activities. Use the VSM, start with the customer in mind, and work your way backwards from the end consumer all the way to the start of the process. Document this so that you have a visual and it becomes easier for you to identify your value and non-value added steps. When you perform this activity, I recommend that you invite as many coworkers as possible that are involved with the process, and you'll be surprised by the amount of steps taken to deliver a product. Now remember, minimizing waste is the heart of the Toyota production system, and the TPS surged when Toyota was going through difficult economical times. Now that you're most likely working from home, I highly recommend that you try to identify and evaluate the forms of waste that occur at your facility and start to generate ideas with your team on potential solutions so that when things get back to normal, you can tackle minimizing waste and becoming more lean. Well, thanks for watching this video. I hope that you start practicing the things that you learned today and stay tuned for the next one on benefits of lean principles and how this applies to you if you're outside of the manufacturing. So until next time, thank you, I'm Chris, and stay simply lean.